Friday, feelings, 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 Happy Friday. Have you got that Friday feeling and you just can't keep it in? Fuck off. No, we're busy. Me too, me too, me too, me too. I, first of all, um, hello fellow my old friend, I've come to do nothing with you again. So, it, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Bit shit, bit grim. Um, I've been furloughed for the second time this year, two separate jobs. Um, so I just, <clears throat> before I do this, I just thought I'd say, I hope everyone's alright. I hope everyone's not too stressed out by hello Matthew good good morning good afternoon Matthew hope no one's too stressed out by uh, lockdown point mark two um furlough before Christmas it's cold now um you know lockdown in the summer is all right when it's summer we summer 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 time just because it's winter it don't mean it has to be shitter you know well, you go, when you're going out there and you're having your little walk or you're going for a run or something, smell that autumn, smell them leaves, you know. Have a look around. It looks beautiful out there. Just wear more clothes than last time, maybe. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, hope you're keeping good. I know it's a shit time. And last last week's Friday feelings... Alex, beefy. Um, yeah, last week's Friday feelings was... Um, you do you. And ho hopefully you take some value from that. And there's certainly some some stuff of use in there that, that I'm trying to keep an eye on because I've just been furloughed now as well. So try, just keep an eye on yourself. Make sure you're all right. Just trying to look after you. It's me, your internet dad. Okay. Today's Friday Feelings um, is it's actually a version of a sales workshop that I've done before in the past. Um, it's not, yeah, it, it, it completely translates to relationships or your real life anyway, so don't worry about that. Oh, sales train, didn't fucking get on board for this shit. Uh, not like that at all. It's called 10 Things That Require Zero Talent, okay? That means you can do this. That means the ability to do this is already within you, okay? I'm going to tell you some really obvious shit, and the reason why I'm doing this is because it's that obvious... It's really, really easy to forget this stuff. So when you when you listen, you go, oh, of course I know this. Of course I know this. But I promise you, when things aren't necessarily going well, there's a couple of these boxes that you're not ticking. I do it all the time. We all do it. You do it. He does it. She does it. She does it. First of all, number one, be on time, okay? If somebody said to you, meet me in town at three o'clock and I'll give you a million, one million dollars, You'd be there at two o'clock, right? And the reason why is because we can see the goal. We can see the instant reward, yeah? However, when we are um, turning up at work or th there's not necessarily an instant goal right there, we can lose lose, lose sight of that, lose traction of that. So be on time. You get there, you're ready, you're in the right mindset. It helps you plan for the day and stuff like that. Obvious, right? Obvious. You wouldn't turn up late for a date, would you? And if you do, it's probably not going to end up the way you envisaged it, okay? You're going to be at home by yourself envisaging it later. Uh, <clears throat> number two, work ethic. So this is about desire. This is about seeing those challenges um, and wanting to take them on. Not shying away from them, not making excuses, grinding through those challenges. Might not be tasks that seem pretty um, sexy or important or enjoyable to do, but you know there's a result at the end of it. So grind through, show that work ethic. Ah, oh, someone dis... Yeah, of course, it is it's my pet peeve. It is my pet peeve. Um, so yeah, um, don't shy away from things. Don't make excuses. Get that desire. Do that thing, okay? <clears throat> Number three, effort. So not to be confused with work ethic. So you've taken on these challenges, okay? The effort is how much of yourself, how much of your mind and your body are you going to put in to these challenges? Hey, can you can you honestly say you wake up every morning and give every day 100%? Of course not. But the ones where you do are the ones where you're most productive, the ones where your relationships are at their best, and the ones where you get the most out of the day. Um, 
mentally and physically. So I shared, I think I, I shared a video yesterday from, from a speech from any given Sunday, Al Pacino, and he says, on this team, the inches we need are all around us and we work for every inch because we know when we add up all those inches, that that's going to be the difference between winning and losing. Between living and fucking dying! That's my, that's a bad, what's he saying? Never late me. Good, Gareth. We, were you a bit late to this? You were a bit late to this, weren't you, Gareth? Um, never late, but apart from this time, but usually not late, Gareth. That's all right, that's fine. That's all right. I'm not, I'm not bothered, Gareth. I don't take that personally. Um, yeah, if, if you think about football, for example, Premier League, right? The season starts, your team goes out there. They draw their first two games, and you're like, well, we look good. The passing was nice. The defence looked sharp. Fast forward to the end of the season, and you're st- and, and you go, we can't afford to draw this game. Can't afford to draw this. Oh, no, we've, we've dropped two points. Like, that game was as valuable as, as the first game of the season, you know. Still worth three points, right? But we thought that was a much bigger deal, but it's not. It's just because the goal is in sight. The reward is there now. So we get a bit more urgent about it. But actually, if we're applying ourselves 100% in those early days, probably wouldn't have even had to worry about them last days. We'd be playing all the youth team going, go on, have a run, lad, have a run. So yeah, 100% all of the time. And, you know, obviously the more you put in, the more you get out. I don't need to tell you that, do I? I'm on your internet, dad. Uh, Number five. Um, body language, okay? Albert Moravian's thing, he tells you the most important things about uh, successful communication. Body language, much more important than the words we use. Smile, look. If you do this to yourself in a mirror, ah, morning me. If you do that in a mirror, science tells you, it's scientifically proven, that releases happy chemicals in your body. It elevates your mood just by forcing a smile and for you to look at it. That means if you smile at strangers in the street, you are essentially releasing their happy chemicals. That's worth it, isn't it? Little smile just for this face workout, just to do that. Um, If you can raise somebody's mood, you don't know what day they've been, you don't know who they are, they might not deserve it, actually. Stop it, don't smile at anyone. Eye contact, making eye contact with all those strangers. I think we've lost a sense of that. We've lost a sense of community since the good old days of the 90s, right? I make eye contact with pretty much everybody I see on the street and I'll also go, morning. I think it's nice to do that. I think it's really, really nice to do that. Stand tall, stand proud. What have you got to be ashamed about? Nothing. Number seven, Cantona. Do extra, yeah? Go that extra mile. Find out what more you can be doing without being asked to do it. Nobody succeeds. Nobody gets by. Nobody... um, yeah, nobody propels themselves to the next level with by doing the bare minimum, okay? If you have already got that work ethic, that energy, that passion, actually, usually this bit, doing more, will come naturally because you've, you've got the hunger then, you know what I mean? You're thinking, maybe if I, if I push a bit more, what happens next? If I, if I try a bit harder, what do I get next? Uh, let's just see. It's gone quiet while I'm out. I'll finish this. <laughs> All right, bye. See you in a bit. <laughs> Lack of eye contact. Yeah, it is ins- I mean, it can be insecurity, definitely. And sometimes, and I've talked about this before, if someone's desperately, they can see you're there, but they, you know, they're desperately avoiding eye contact, maybe they've got, that might lean to social anxiety or something like that. So don't give people, why are you not looking at me? Look at me! You know, it might, that might be counterintuitive um, to uh, to get angry about it. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, just look at me, smile, I'm smiling at you, you know. Have you ever made eye contact with someone? They're looking at you and then you smile at them and they look away. Weird, weirdos. So yeah, um, do extra, okay? Go that extra mile. If you're leaving that, toilet in a pub and there's a tap running turn it off like it's not your water why should you care but once you get into the habit of doing little things like that go on love you can go in front of me you've only got bread you know what i mean letting people out at a junction it's a nice way to live you just go in that extra mile to no benefit to yourself but it's actually it does make you feel really good and obviously you're improving somebody's life every time you do it nice isn't it that nice to be nice number eight be prepared, be prepared. It's a lesson that must be shared. Be prepared, be prepared, be prepared. 
So yeah, if you're doing something you've never done before, like find out as much stuff as you can about it, work out what you're going to need to do that thing, work out exactly what it, what do you want to do it for? What's the ultimate goal? What's the main objective? What's the point? Um, and work out what could go wrong, all the variables. If you think about 10 variables, you've probably covered them all in a roundabout way. You don't need to get too specific. But we're not at our best when we're off guard, when we're on the back foot, if we're surprised, yeah? So make sure that you've done the prep, you've worked out, mm, what could what could this person ask me? What might they be, what might they be wanting from this? Um, do that prep, go into it, and then you're armed, you know, you've got, you've, you're prepared, you feel, and it makes you feel more confident anyway, because you've looked into it, don't go in there blind, don't go in where, just anywhere, don't go in anywhere, don't be blind. Number nine, be coachable, really, really important, and I think this is one we can not forget so much, but sometimes we can see it as an, an attack, someone goes, mate, jump. So let me tell you how I, I'd go about doing that. People are like, I, I do it. I've, I've been doing this for ages. I know what I'm doing, mate. I know what I'm doing. The amount of people that I have trained over the last, well, 10, 15 years who've gone, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. It's a, I'll do it my way. You know, it's not an attack. It's not an attack at all. Um, even if I'm doing a training for someone and, and they think they're above it, there's things that they could take on a negative viewpoint. They could see, they could... Oh, that transition didn't really work. Oh, that didn't go down very well when he said that. Oh, look, he's not even making eye contact with individual people. Um, positives can be taken from things that you think are doing badly. You can take them on. You can learn from them, right? Um, but, yeah, it's it, it, it's it's to your own um, disadvantage to be defensive about coaching. Yeah, it is, it is about humbleness. So to be able to open yourself up to development does take a, a level of humbleness. So be humble. Open yourself up. Um, bloody hell, I played Cuphead on the Xbox with my four-year-old on Thursday, Wednesday night, right? And he walked around the back of this mountain. Like, he's obviously seen it on a YouTube video. I'd have never known that. I'd have never been able to find that out had this four-year-old not shown me how to do it. Like, he showed me two things. I was like, what? This four-year-old taught me two things on, on Wednesday. So, yeah, anyone can teach you. Even a, even an idiot kid. Um, and number 10, attitude, yeah, obviously this runs throughout them all, which is why it's last, um, given the, given the circumstances at the minute, it's, it's easy to go, oh, everything's shit, this is just my luck, this, this is just my luck, furloughed twice, two jobs, I got made redundant from the last time, I bet this is going to happen again now, you know, it is easier than ever to, um, to 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 be wallowing at the minute, and of course, there's certain factors that that wallowing is completely justified, you know. So I'm not going to just sort it out. Come on, cheer up, cheer up, mate. Um, absolutely, reason to, uh, to to do a bit of wallowing, but is it always justified? Check that wallowing, you know. What's what is it that's upsetting you? well worth making a list i think this is kind of a lean to uh, cognitive behavioral therapy not obviously not going to go right into it but make a list of those things make a list of what's the worst thing that's going to happen out of this what could, what why am I, why is this getting me down so much then another column what do i do to tackle this thing is it easy usually is and then the next one misery loves company of course it does and then the next one, when can I get this ticked off by? And I swear to God, like, how, how good is it to tick off things on your life to-do list? You know what I mean? Ooh, yeah, getting through it, getting through it, levelling up, sorting things out. Um, really, really important. Write it down. Can it be dealt with? How do you deal with it? When can you deal with it by? And what's the worst that can happen from that situation? Um, look, if you've got a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food in your cupboards and you're watching this on a device you're in the top 15 percent richest people in the world you might, believe it or not you might not be necessarily feeling very rich but you're not in a country of famine you're not you turn a tap on and water comes out you flush your toilet and it goes away you uh you know there's there's no bombs gonna fall from this sky so get have a try to try to cultivate an attitude for gratitude 
Um, of course, I'm not going. Just cheer up. There's a lot of things that are uh, sort of worthy, worthy. Um, yeah, that's it. One to ten. What I'm going to do is actually I'm going to post a little graphic so that you can see these ten points again as well. I'll post that in the comments. Obvious stuff, obvious stuff. But that obvious, we tend to forget to make eye contact with people. We cruise along without really putting a hundred percent. We turn up five minutes late to that Zoom meeting because it's a mate, you know. We turn down that advice because we know about. We already know that stuff, you know what I mean? We already know that, and we might wallow a little bit at a time like this more than we probably should. Don't spend that time wallowing. Spend it on getting yourself out of that position. Getting you. Let, let's uh, let's make the most of this time, yeah. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Friday. Feelings, Friday, feeling, Friday, feeling, Friday, feelings. Bless us. Just try to have a nap, ain't she? Thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah, guys, take it easy. Bye. See you soon. Bye, bye, bye.